Hey, what's up, guys? Coach Mac, playfestfootball.blogspot.com. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some dime package stuff. I got uh, got an email from from one of uh, one of our followers and said that uh, he'd like to know a little bit more about our dime package stuff and 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 how we use our dime package. And it was uh, it was a blog that I did maybe when we first started about a year or two ago. It was something I was doing at the other high school I was at, uh, where I had some guys that had played for me for. Uh, for a couple of years and it was you know we were able to build it into our system to where these guys could understand what it was we were trying to do and how we were trying to do it so we're going to talk a little bit about today about how we incorporate uh, dime packet stuff into um, into our 425 defense and uh, it's got some very simple rules to it so I'm going to go through what those rules are and how it matches the coverages that we already play so we don't have to change coverages so it's got some real easy um, uh, buy into it because the things are already built into it so it's not a completely different package it takes a little bit of coaching and understanding from the kids but you know it doesn't take a lot once you get it taught it's got some simple rules and you know as you continue to build on it you can you know get exotic with some things but we kept it as simple as we possibly could all right so first thing is for us is for a four two five we're going to go from four two five to three two six we're going to put in a six db all right so we're going to take our nose out we're going to bring our free safety in, okay? So we're going to take the nose out, okay? And we are going to bring a free safety in, all right? Now, we already have a free safety in the game, so the free safety that we bring in, we call the dime, all right? So the free safety coming in the game, we call the dime, okay? So now we've got two free safeties in the, in, in the game. The reason that's important, all right, for us, <coughs> excuse me, we can set it, when we played our dime stuff, we set it one way and we never changed. All right, so we kept the corners on the same side, we kept the end and the rush on the same side, we kept the mic and the wheel on the same side, kept our left safety, right safety, for now, for us it would be strong safety, weak safety, our free safety and our dime, those guys stayed on one side of the field when we went to our dime kept package and we never changed strength, okay? Because I put a second free safety in the game, or a kid who understands the free safety's responsibilities, I could play coverage to either side of the field, strong or weak, okay? I could play coverage to either side of the field because my safeties had an understanding, all right, of what our coverage picture was and how we played coverages based off of the formations that were given to us, okay? So, what we did, in our dime package to make it a little bit different is we became an odd team. So we went to a straight 50 Oki front. All right, so we put our tackle head up on the center. Put our rush end in a five, we put our end in a five. We had our Mike in a strong side 30 to the left, Willie in a weak side 30 to the right. Didn't matter where the ball was or what the formation was, all right, they were always gonna line up left and right. Now the Willie might be a strong side 30 guy, all right, depending on the formation, but he's always going to be on the right, and Mike is always left. All right, we'd have our strong safety always on the left. We'd have our weak safety always on the right. Our left corner stayed. Our free safety stayed on the left. Our dime stayed on the right. Our right corner was on the right-hand side. So we went to a 3-4 odd Oki front, all right, base 50 front, all right, and that made it a little bit different from the standard 4-2-5. Brought in a 6-DB, put the 6-DB on the field. A second free safety, a kid that understands the free safety's coverages so he can play both sides. Now here's what we did, okay? Our standard, our standard call, all right, was slant base. So we put the nickel group on the field, all right, and we'd go slant base, okay? And what we did, all right, was we always wanted to slant strong okay so that meant we were going to slant from the weak side of the formation towards the strong side of the formation slant to, from the side all right for us we would always slant from the side with the least amount of receivers and then i'll give you what my rule was when it was two by two and i'll tell you why we did it that way but we always wanted to slant from the side that had the least amount of wide receivers so if it was a pro set like you see right here okay we would come out on the field and we would call tiger slant base, okay? Pro set lines up, all right? Formation gets declared, they got two receivers on the left, one receiver on the right. 
Okay? We want to send the slant strong. So the safety to the side with the least amount of receivers. Okay? All right? He would send the front away from him. So right now, our weak safety would be making a left. All right? This weak safety would make a left, left call. He was telling the defensive line to go left. And we would slant one gap left, okay? We would bring that safety from the side of the least amount of receivers. From the weak side, we would bring that safety up as the fourth rusher, okay? We bring that weak safety up as the fourth rusher. What that left us with was it left us with a corner and a safety to the single receiver side. All right, which is what we always have. So it left us with a corner and a safety to the single. It left me with a corner and two safeties to the multiple receiver side. So on the back end, all right, it left me in the same coverage scenarios I've always been in in my 4-2-5. So on the back end, for those of you who have watched, all right, a lot of our videos, all right, or if you've seen, I, I just mentioned that I have an ebook out now. Uh, on Kindle and Amazon. It's called Split Field Coverages by Thomas McPherson. All right. You know how we want to play formationally, how we want to play coverages. To the single receiver side, okay, we would get that safety down and he would go. That would leave us with just a single. So that weak safety's there and he's going. So to the single side, we either want it to be safety down, cornerback, which is us. That's a sky call. Safety down, D gap flat. All right, wheel player, cornerback off the half, playing deep half. That is a sky call, okay? Or we could make a cloud call, all right? If we made a cloud call, that meant corner down, playing what we call a slice technique. We very rarely, in our single side defense, we very rarely press the number one because I'm worried about D-gap run, all right? So I give the one a free release with the safety over the top because I'm worried about D-gap run. So we play a slice technique, and we slice this corner inside. That would mean that the dime has to be over the top playing a deep half. So to that single side, we're playing sky cloud like we always do, all right, in our base defense. So I've got a dime package in, I'm slanting the front, adding a fourth rusher, and I'm playing my base coverages behind me. To the strong side, we had a tight end and a flanker, all right, and that tells us that we want to play quarters. Okay, so my corner is going to have all of one except shallow. My strong safety, that's my D gap, all right? He is my flat force wheel player. He's my D gap player. He's my force player in the run game. He's my flat player in the passing game. He carries the wheel of two, all right? So he's my flat, fi fli uh, flat force wheel player. My mic is just a strong side hook player, all right? He can be hooked to curl, and he's got to worry about three vert. He's got to worry about carrying three vert. In a pro formation, two back with a tight end, you don't get a lot of three vertical, but your mic has to be ready to carry. Okay? Free safety is playing quarters. He's an extra guy in the run game. He's flat foot reading. Any runs he gets, he's showing up, wants to fit between the strong safety and the mic on the front side, and he'd like to fit behind the mic if the ball ran away so the mic can play fast and be a cutback player. He's got all of two vertical. Two verticals mine. Two to the flat, I rob post and curl at number one. Two underneath, I rob post and curl at number one. Okay? So that put us in our base coverage to a 21, all right, uh, pro tight end, whatever the set is, 21 personnel. Bring the pressure from the weak side, slant the line away, bring the fourth rusher with it. Single side, play some type of cover two. All right, cloud or sky. All right, front side, play quarters. Okay? So it got us right back into all our base philosophies on defense. Got us right back to where we wanted to be on defense. All right, let's say for argument's sake they come out and it's two back, but it's twins. All right, it's 21 personnel twins. The alignment stays the same. The alignment never changes. Tackle, rush, end. Mike, will. Strong safety, okay? Weak safety. Right corner, dime, free safety, left corner, okay? Our rule tells us that we want to slant, okay, to the strong side to where the, from, 
from where the least amount of receivers are. So there's two receivers right, one receiver left. My strong safety makes a right, right, right call. He sends the front, one gap to the right. My strong safety comes up and becomes our seven technique going with the front. All right? So he becomes the seven technique. So I basically have slanted back to our over front. That's all I've done is I've slanted back to our over front. Okay? To the side with two receivers. Okay? They have two removed. I've got a corner and two safeties for their two receivers. I've got my normal three for two. We're going to go ahead and play two read. That's our standard adjustment to two, a uh, uh, number two receiver removed. We're going to play two read. Corner and dime read off a of number two. Apex player that's inside of two. Don't let two cross my face. Don't let three out leverage me. Okay? That's what we play all the time to two removed. We're going to play it now. To the back side, I have just a single, and I have a corner and a free safety. Okay? Corner and a free safety. All right? So now, on the back side, once the strong safety is up, in the seven going, now I can be sky with the safety down and the corner over the half. Okay? Sky, safety down, corner over the half. Or I could be cloud. Corner down, safety over the half. So the safety's over the half, and there's your flat force player as the corner. So to the single, I'm still playing, all right, cloud or sky coverage. I'm playing a version of cover two to the single side. Now, just a little tip. When you get a nub tight end side, okay, and in order for you to gain an extra player in the run, the deep half player plays with robber technique. So in other words, right now the free safety is the deep half player, okay? But the tight end is really the only guy immediately that can threaten him to the half. So instead of being 14 or 16 off, we're going to play him at about 10. We're going to flat foot read him through the tight end. If the tight end puts his hands on the 7 or the tight end has low pad run demeanor, that free safety is going to come up and he's going to fit. And he's going to fit the alley between the mic and the corner on the front side, and he's going to try and play behind the mic on runs away from him. That's how we're going to gain a guy. They've removed the safety to the palm side because they have twins. So in order for us to gain a guy back, we've got to gain him back on this side. How are we going to do that? We're going to take our cover two player that's deep, and we're going to play him in a robber technique. All right, and we're going to get him down. So it's a lot easier to play cloud because your free safety knows how to play robber technique, and your corner doesn't. So it's a lot easier to just go ahead and play cloud, play your corner down, play your free safety as the robber player. But we're playing cover two to this side, unless we get some type of immediate run with the tight end with run demeanor and hands on, now it'll turn into a robber technique and we'll get an extra guy and an extra hat, all right, in there. Okay? All right, now, if it was one back, we'll go two by two. This was our rule, okay? And this is the reason it was our rule. If they were one back, two by two, okay? If they were one back, two by two, we always went left. Two by two for us was an automatic left call. And the reason it was an automatic left call for us, all right, and right now I'm talking specifically two by two, 10 personnel open. I'm not talking 11 personnel with a tight end. That gets into some game plan things and where you want to send it from, but Two by two, ten personnel, okay? The reason we auto left, all right, the reason we made an automatic left call is because of my will linebacker. My will linebacker in my base defense is the guy in two by two that removes himself to be an apex guy when we play two read, okay? So if we ever got two by two in dime, didn't matter where the ball was or where, where anything was, we made an auto left call. So we automatically went left. Brought the weak safety up and brought him off the edge, okay? Because that allowed us to walk the willy where he's comfortable in, in two by two and to put the mic back where he's comfortable in two by two and to have the strong safety down where he's comfortable in two by two. So now I'm two read here and I'm two read over here. So that's why we made an auto left because our will is on the right and our will is our guy that walks all the time, the two by two. So we made an auto left call 
all right, when it was two by two in that scenario, all right, two by two, 10 personnel. If it's two by two, 11 personnel, you've got a couple different ways that you can handle it, all right? You can slant it towards a tight end and play, you know, either a lock coverage or a palms coverage. You can slant it away from the tight end, all right? There's a lot of different scenarios you could look at, and I'll just draw up. I'll draw up run one real quick just so you can see. Either way you do it, you're going to be fine as long as you play your coverage, all right? If I put the tight end there, all right, and I put, let's see, slot over here. As long as you keep your coverage rules and your kids are in position to play coverage, you're going to be fine. You can go to this set, you can go left or right, and it really shouldn't be an issue. Okay, so right now to this set, if I were to make a right call and I were to send the front towards the tight end and bring a strong safety, okay, with the front, all right, in that situation right there, I were to bring the strong safety with the front, all right, and make a right call towards the tight end, okay. On the side of the tight end, I now have two safeties at a corner. I have three for two. That's going to put me in a situation where I can play my regular quarters coverage, right? That's going to put me in a situation where I can play my regular quarters coverage, okay? To the back side, I have a corner and a safety. I don't have a down player. The only down player would be to kick the front and put the mic out and the wheel there. Two reasons I don't like it. The mic never does that for us, and the fall-in gap for the mic is the A gap. So what do we choose to do if that was the scenario? We got two removed away from quarters. My guys are going to go ahead and say lock, and they're going to play this man out here. So we would go ahead and play that man. We would go ahead and play that man. So we would play quarters to the front side, and we would play man, all right, to this side. So if we wanted to slant it towards the tight end, as long as my DBs that understand how we play coverage, they know that we're playing quarters over here, they know we're going to play lock over here, okay? They know that we don't walk the mic out. The will is the only guy that walks out for us. So if it was 11 personnel two by two, all right, that's one of the ways that you could, yeah, you could do it. Now, argument's sake, let's just look at it the other way now. All right, you say, all right, coach, I want to move it the other way, okay? All right, so now you're gonna say left, 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 coach, make a left call. Let's send it this way, all right? which will put us back in our over front. Let's send it that way, okay? To this side right here, I've got a corner and two safeties. I've got three for two. If I've got three for two, corner and two safeties that I always have, and they have a number two removed, I'm gonna play two read. That is my standard coverage to number two removed when I have three players, two safeties in a corner, or I have a safety wheel in corner. That's how I play two removed all the time, okay? All the time. So to this side, I've got two safeties in a corner. They got two removed, I'll go two read. Back here, I've got a safety and a corner and a wheel in the box. They have two receivers, okay? Two receivers makes us play lock, all right? Two receivers makes us play lock on that side, all right? So, if it's a tight end and a flanker, we're going to play lock. Could we play, all right, could we play some version if this was into the boundary, okay? If this was into the boundary, the short side of the field, we could certainly play cover two, okay? We could certainly play cover two, all right, if that was into the boundary. We can't play quarters, and the reason we can't play quarters is because we don't have a flat player if the tight end wheels to the flat, all right? Because we're sending the weak safety, the strong safety's on the other side. We don't have an extra guy to play true traditional quarters, okay? So we could play lock, we could play cover two, all right? If this was into the boundary, technically, if this was the short side of the field, you could get away with playing two read, even though that's a tight end and a flanker. You could get away with playing two read, all right? As long as your will knows not to get out leveraged by three, tight end doesn't cross his face. If this was into the boundary and these splits were tight, you could play two read. 
I don't do it to a flanker and, and a tight end. I would rather play locker cover two myself on that back side. But that's how in 11 personnel, two by two, you can sit in the front either way and still have base coverages that you teach every day with your kids being able to get those coverages in. Okay? All right, three by one. All right, three by one. Remember, our standard rule is slant strong. So we get three by one. All right, our standard rule is slant strong from the side of the least amount of wide receivers. So tackle, rush, and Mike, Will. Okay, strong safety, weak safety. Corner, dime, free safety, left corner. I want to bring it from the side with the least amount of wide receivers. Okay, so the side with the least amount of wide receivers is the right. We're going to make a left call. We're going left, left, left. Left, 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 weak safety comes up, comes off the horn. Okay, to the back side, I've got a safety and a corner, so I am either going to play sky or cloud coverage. Okay, sky or cloud coverage. To the front side, I've got my corner safety, safety mic. To the trips, I'm going to go ahead and play our standard trips adjustment, which is mix. Okay. Take my corner and play man, take my strong safety and play outside of two, my free safety slightly inside of three, strong safety, free safety, read off the release of number three, my mic hips, my will bumps, okay, my mic now plays three doesn't cross my face, four doesn't out leverage me, my will drops to the side of four, if four floods I cut to the flood, four goes weak, alright, I drop to the weak side so we get three on two, four on three. Four goes strong, we get five on four, two on one. All right, so if it was three by one, now that's our standard. Make a left, left, left call. Send everybody left, bring the weak safety. All right, and now we have sky cloud there with our standard three by one mix adjustment there. Okay? You can do the same thing if this was the other side. All right, if this was the other side, you could do the same thing. All right? If you had three by one the other way, you could do the same thing. Because you have two free safeties, all right, because you have two free safeties, you can do the same thing. All right, send it from the side with the least, right? Strong safety, get up and go with it, right, right, right. To the trips, dime, weak safety, corner. I got three safeties there. All right, go ahead and play mix. Right safety there, okay. Weak safety there, dime there. Willie hipped out in that position, Mike bumped over inside. Got to cross train how you play your Mike and your Will because now they're in positions they're not normally used to being in. Backside, I have a single. I'm going to play sky or I'm going to play cloud. Okay? I'm going to play sky or I'm going to play cloud. So three by one, either way, we can play it because we have an extra free safety in. Really don't care which way the three by one is, extra free safety we can play. All right? One of the last things we did out of this package. Because it was balanced and because it was even, we just ran America's zone pressure and we ran it to both sides. All right, so gave ourselves a little bit of zone pressure, tackle, rush, and Mike, Will, strong safety, weak safety, right corner, dime, free safety, left corner. All right, we wanted to bring it from the left. Okay, long stick the end, move the tackle one, rush outside, Bring the mic, bring the strong safety. Spin the free safety down, spin the dime to the middle, okay? Two seam here, three hole here, two seam here, okay? Hot third, hot third, all right? Middle third, okay? Hot third, hot third, middle third. Two seam players, three hole dropper. America's blitz, long stick, two gap move with the end. Mike in the B, strong safety coming through in the C. Okay, because we were balanced and we didn't switch sides, we would teach the same blitz from the other side. All right, we would teach the same zone pressure from the other side. So we would just go ahead and get lined up, tackle there, rush there, end there, Mike there, Will there, weak safety, strong safety, left corner, free safety, dime, right corner. Now we're bringing it from this side, long stick to rush, Move the tackle, move the end, Willie to the B, weak safety there. Dime down, free safety spin. Two seam, three hole, okay, two seam. 
Hot third. Middle third. Hot third. So now we had a slant package with base coverage in, and we had two zone blitzes, one from each side, all right, one from each side that we had in, and we had three under three deep pressure behind it. All right, we had a zero pressure, and we also had a drop eight. We used some, some five under three deep and some six under two deep in drop eight. But the, the, the basis was the slant strong, all right, with our base coverage behind it, all right, so the dime call for us, dime slant strong was the base, okay, and then Zone blitz from left side, zone blitz from right side. We would bring it from the field or boundary, determine all we had to do is know whether we wanted to bring it from the left or the right. So we'd have zone blitz left, zone blitz right. All right, then we did have a zero and we did have a drop eight. All right, but uh, I'm not gonna put those up there. Uh, a little bit short on time today. I gotta get outside and get to some seven on seven stuff that our guys are doing right now. As always guys, it's, uh, it's important that you have answers you want to have answers on defense, you want to have a dime package, you want to have you know all the short yardage, long yardage. Most important thing is what can your kids do? This past season we ran no dime package at all, didn't install it in our school, don't have it installed at our school yet. All right, right now as of this year we won't run it again. We don't feel like our kids can play our base yet. Once our kids can play our base, then we'll go to our dime. So it's important to know that even though you might have these schemes or you can draw these things up, you only run them if you feel like your kids can handle them. Because at the end of the day, if they're confused, they play slow, play slow, they play bad. All right, you won't win games until you start to play fast. I'll catch you guys next time.